This is the third weekend of this sort that we've run recently, well, in the last 18 months or so. Um, and it's the last of this sort of workshop. Um, and I say that it's the last workshop that I shall ever run, which is based on historic material and the interpretation or exploitation of that sort, you know, like we have done. We've ended up today with, in fact, a bit of looking forward to what people do nowadays, as it were. Uh, yes, I've imposed my dances on you. Um, in April next year, not the weekend that Great Western are running, yeah, right. Beth is, as far as I'm concerned, my contact on a weekend where the intention is to look is to be involved with modern Morris. In other words, either Morrises that I have seen and filmed over the last 50 years where people have been breaking new ground, or hopefully um, friends with size that have done that sort of thing to come along and talk about, teach their dance and so on. It's not the same way, it's really about Morris as it is um, now and so on. Um, it's not that I'm giving up Morris, but I'm giving up this sort of flogging a dead horse type mode. <laughs> right, um, I, I believe in the future, not the past, in that sense. Um, right. So we're going on. Oh, yeah. The objective, uh, what the background objective with Jerry West and John and so on is to make the uh, archive <coughs> available to people. Archive material should be accessible to everybody. They should no longer have to chase all the way in the world to try and get these little bits together. We ought to be able to get it available in the way that John's doing at the moment. Um, the first step is to make sure that um, this website has um, all the articles I've ever written. Uh, they're more or less all, all together. Um, doesn't need much more work to finish that lot up. Then the dance notations themselves. Um, yeah, most traditions I can compress to about two sheets. It's like the black book, but a bit more information about the tradition, a little bit more um, about the inspiration that the tradition gives to people and so on. Uh, so somewhere next year, possibly by April, but certainly middle of next year, there'll be that available. So they the same sort of source. Um, that's not the only way of doing archive. Um, I'm trying to produce a dump. Somebody's waving our hands. Would it be possible oh, you've got a head as well. Yeah. Would it be possible to put videos alongside the notation? I find it's much easier to understand notation when there's a video as well. Well, yeah. If those who've got access only to the Black Book by Lionel Bacon, um, I'm afraid I wrote most of that. Um, it had to be done in a form that was acceptable to the people doing Morris in 1970. Uh, and therefore compromises were made. It was only an aid memoir. You were supposed to know a fair bit about it. It was only to help you uh, um, learn a new dance or a tradition you already knew. Um, and unfortunately, because of the, t the time scale schedule, um, there was no time to revise the initial um, traditions up to the standard of the later ones. Um, and therefore what was first published, in fact, is a bit of a mixed bag. I do have a version of it on my computer um, which is all consistent to the latter style. But um, I f personally feel the Black Book had served its purpose by then. And what people need is a little bit more advice about when you do badly, where do the hands go? You know, and how much wrist movement you owe up here. Yeah, because you all understand what the words mean. You all understand what the figures are. You know, but the finer detail, um, you often need clues on which way to go. So we yeah, we need to produce something a bit better. The target of that is next year. Um, in the meantime, um, there's a lot of material, uh, background material. When I say a lot of material, most of my material is 50 years old. Uh, last week I actually found the cubby hole at which I put my original notes in and things like that. Um, when I say original notes, 
I've got an envelope. It's torn all around all the edges. All the pages are different sizes. They're all muddled up and things like that. Um, yes, over 50 years, I've made a right old mess of it all. I shall run them through the quick copier, and I'm giving a copy to Barry. <laughs> yeah, um, over the years, only Barry and Tony Barron in the States has ever approached me for a reasonable um, view of what the archive material is, and therefore only two people uh, pass this material to friends. It's not the sort of thing that the average Morris Dancer or Average Club actually needs to consult. It's scrappy, um, you have to pull it all together, um, and you need to the project at the top down. You need to start, as it were, with a notate, proper short notation, read the notes behind it, read the notes behind that, and so on, until you get there, too familiar. Now, it means there are only one or two people like myself who actually need to go down in that depth of detail, and so on. So I'm giving it back. He's 25 years younger than I am, believe it or not. <laughs> you know, um, and therefore he'll be arranged for some site longer than I will. But, you know, um, we're the resources that can still be tapped, and so on. Um, for those who actually want to come and talk to me a bit, Morris, uh, anybody who wants to talk Morris is always welcome. We always put everything else in life aside uh, to talk Morris to anybody, and so on. Um, we even know to feed people. Right, yeah. So if anybody, if anybody really wants to uh, chase things... Thursdays and the weekend is a better time to choose. Monday, yeah. Wednesday and Friday are dialysis days and I never know when I'm going to get it back. Yeah. <laughs> I believe in face-to-face. -face. I don't believe in emails. I have an email address and I'm not giving it to you. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's as simple as that. Why do I want an email address? I do have problems with my family. <laughs> Which bit of your family do you have trouble with? I spent <laughs> nearly 47 years working in a very secure environment. You know, and I know how to actually keep things to myself. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, there, so please. Um, yeah, we are accessible, both of us, all of us are accessible, and so on. It's the nature of the Morris. Uh, put it another way, it's Sunday. It was our Christian duty to introduce a little of happiness into everybody's life. The fact that I chose it to be Morris dancers is just a fact of life. Um, now, I'm concerned about the future, on the sense that I shan't be here and I'm worried about the mess you're going to make of it. Um, I don't really mean that, you know that. Um, the world's mess. Um, all the, you know, you open up the newspaper, um, the politics seem to have fallen apart in this country. Uh, Iran's going to bomb I, uh, I, Israel. Uh, the, no oil will be produced in the Middle East. Uh, all the world's fishes are dying out because the, the sea is acidifying. All the trees are dying out because of the acid rain and things of that sort. In other words, um, people in this country at least love to moan and they're full of it in the newspapers. Uh, but it does worry me because uh, when you go out, we go out with a moral side, you know, you dance in a lovely spot. Who watches? One man and his dog perhaps. Um, the other side you dance with, you get on with each other because there's only people to talk to, but you don't watch each other very much because you don't do the same dances and things like that. Um, and you can't get people out of the pub because they're sitting there eating. You can't expect them to come and spend three quarters an hour while their food gets cold and so on. Um, social life is changing. It has been doing in my life for 50 years. Um, when I worked at the British Library many years ago, looking at 19th century journals, I discovered right from 1800 onwards, both the ladies' journals, the farmers' journals, and the technical ones, all were bemoaning about the fast rate of exchange, change and things like this. Um, unfortunately, for those mathematically inclined, exponential functions have the same slope and derivatives wherever you are on the slope. 
and, and that's the way it's seen, it's seen to people, let's say, for 200 years and probably longer. In fact, think in your mind, if I say Stone Age, Iron Age, Romans, Saxons, Normans, Tudor, Restoration, Victorians, First World War, 1945, today, a series of images should have come to your mind, <coughs> totally different from each other. We're all aware, in other words, the world has been changing ever since hunter-gatherers uh, decided that planting co uh, seed might be a better idea than chasing rabbits, <laughs> and so on. You know, uh, so yeah, the world is changing, and it will continue to change. You know, the technology is going to solve problems. I suspect not all of them, but it will solve it. Life is full at the moment of technology, you know, cameras, electric, electronics, and so on, um, in a way that wasn't when I started. You know, um, I had to use a standard eight camera to record things with no same. You know, uh, at the moment, the problem is digitizing the archive. You know, in fact, digitizing the Morris, really, and so on, is what <coughs> we're talking about doing today. Uh, now, where is the future? What, what, what's going to happen? What other trends? What are we, the Morris world, going to have to do? Because Fairly small, you're not really going to continue, we're not going to continue in the way we're doing. Now, here's a gentleman. Thank you, Roy. You've got that problem, as you understand the problem, don't you? Yes, I very much do. I mean, um, like you, I come from a scientific background, and so the, the, the one thing that's for certain, to reiterate what you're saying, is the future won't be like the past and the future will be different, and change is something that we need to embrace rather than uh, resist. Um, I'm also old enough to have uh, started Morris when the only organisation was the Morris Ring, and I'm very well aware of why the Federation and the Open <coughs> formed. But I've also spent a long time in business development, and coming now into the role of Treasurer of the Ring, and starting to look at the structure of, of Morris from the outside, the first thing that comes to mind is to say, why are there three organisations? If you look at what has happened in trade unions, there's been amalgamation. You look at what has happened in our professional institutions, they've all come together, they've all amalgamated in one form or another in order to have a, a much stronger voice, um, to be able to project what they do, and yet they still embrace within those organisations the various elements of diversity. So one of the obvious images that one can see is for the JMO or in some way for these organisations to come together. Now clearly there are a whole range of barriers to those organisations coming together. There's a lot of baggage. But I, I would be interested to, to hear from other people what they feel as to whether that is a route forward yeah. and the benefits of it and maybe some of the problems in actually doing it. Right. As you saw one of the view falls for great Wishford, unity is strength. Absolutely. Yes. yes. <laughs> Do we have um, people from a relatively new side here? Right. Come on. How do you see the future? Um, well, the new side with the anonymous Morris, we've been going two years, and we're lucky we've managed the bulk of our dancers are under 30. But we don't dance mainly at pubs. Most of what we get is paid bookings. When I started the side, I contacted Paul Tourism and said, would you like to sponsor a new Morris side? So we had a deal whereby they gave us a 200 donation towards Kit, and we agreed to do three dance spots for them. And that's picked up. We now do a lot of our dance spots are paid bookings for Paul Tourism. So when they've got a fate on Paul Key, they ask us to do it. When they're doing things down on the beach, they ask us to come and perform. So it's a good stream of income, and we perform to good crowds watching, applauding and enjoying it. Right. And that's satisfying to the side. Mm. Yeah. Right, yes. This is a good yeah. audience. And it pays for the whole hire as well. Hey. That's right. Well, <coughs> that means that you just pick up whatever's available. Oh, we get, we've, we've been asked. I mean, no, I don't, don't mean that. I mean, you're not actually controlling the events that you do. You go to the events that somebody else yeah. will organise. 
Most yeah. of so you just have to adjust to whatever the events, how they change. <laughs> yeah, people, we get invited to a lot of places. Yeah. So we've got a good website and people tend to look for Morris team and they seem to come across right. us and like us. Great. Now, is that a common experience with clubs? I think that's opposite from where we are. We're, we're somewhere where we get very few corporate bookings. Um, and if we do, most of the team don't want to do the corporate bookings that's or the small fates. You know, it's the fate worse than death, it's the that's, phrase. That's the price. Um, <laughs> we'll do them if we can link them into a pub tour and have a good time and invite other teams. But generally, our team, we know we have to do it because we live in an expensive area and we have problems meeting our hall fees. So we do corporate bookings, but usually it's the, the handful that do the corporate bookings and a lot of people choose not to come along with the corporate bookings. Um, and we wish we got more offers. I mean, they, they don't come in very Would your much. side work as it does now if uh, travel was much more restricted? Do you have a large catchment area? You know, we're, we're seven counties more. Uh, right. Yeah. Yes. Well, one of the possibilities of the future is severe restrictions on travel. Yeah. There just won't be the fuel available, um, and trouble as the railway lines only run into London. Mm. Yeah, uh, all the country lines have disappeared, and they're never going to be replaced, uh, and so on. Um,